Hello wonderful people, it is Genevieve and in this video we're going to learn how to paint shiny metal. And this video is part of a digital art course that I designed as a month-long YouTube series, so it is totally free. And you can definitely choose to only watch this one video if all you care about is how to paint shiny metal. Or you can take on the challenge of improving our art skills by drawing along with the community every day. And if you want to do that, make sure to check out my website where the full schedule for the entire challenge is going to be. And also make sure to subscribe as well as ring the bell so you don't miss any of the upcoming textures that are going to be part of this course. All you need for this tutorial is some sort of a digital art software and I will be using Procreate on the iPad Pro. But you can definitely use pretty much anything that has layers in it. So Photoshop, Corel Painter, Krita, Affinity Designer. Honestly, most mainstream and not even like that mainstream <laughs> digital art software uh, will do for this tutorial. I will be suggesting just really basic digital art brushes. So basically the one that come with your software, they're definitely going to work. And I will also include a free color palette in the description below, but otherwise you can pick your own colors if that's more what you're into. And if you are watching this video in uh, the course, you also need to set aside, I would say 15 to 25 minutes, depending on whether you are on day 20 or 21 of the program. And with that being said, let's start drawing. So the first thing you will want to do is to create a new canvas and the size is totally up to you depending on what you're using this illustration for. If you're just practicing, I recommend something like 2000 per 2000 pixels. I also recommend setting your background to a neutral color if you're just practicing. So if you have the color palette, any of the grays on the right hand side are neutral grays. Otherwise you just pick a gray <laughs> that you like. So we're going to start by creating all of our layers all at once and that's going to be super helpful. I know it might seem a bit tedious to do, but it kind of helps planning the whole piece and it makes it way less overwhelming. So go ahead and start by creating a layer named Based, or Base I should say, and then a layer on top of this one set as a clipping mask that you're going to rename to Shadow and change the blending mode of to Multiply. You're then going to create another layer. This is also a clipping mask and this one is going to be renamed to uh, reflection. And you're going to change the blending mode of this one to multiply as well, but you're going to lower the opacity somewhere around 60 to 70%. You're then going to create another layer, also a clipping mask. And what a clipping mask does is basically everything you're going to draw on those layers that are applied clipping mask, the color is going to stay within the base layer. So that's super helpful. This layer you're going to rename to lights and you're going to change the blending mode to overlay. You're then going to create another layer, also a clipping mask of course. They're basically all going to be clipping masks so <laughs> you can take that as granted. This one you're going to rename to highlights. Um, I'm struggling a little bit. I'm really, <laughs> my handwriting for some reason is terrible on the iPad so I'm quite amazed that it's able to recognize anything but anyway. And you're going to change the blending mode of this highlight layer to add. The next layer you're going to create is also a clipping mask, of course. This one is going to be renamed to Reflected Lights. And that's something that is super important for metal, uh, especially super shiny metal. And the blending mode of this one is going to be Overlay. The next layer is also a clipping mask. Are you surprised? <laughs> the blending mode is going to be Soft Light. And you're going to rename this one to um, Ambient. And that's basically what's going to allow us to have metal feel like it is part of the environment around it and not just like an independent little thing. And the last layer you're going to create is going to be put below everything and that is the drop shadow. This one is not a clipping mask because it, it is below the base anyway. And you're going to change the blending mode of this one to either linear burn or multiply and lower the opacity somewhere around 80%. And believe it or not, this was the hardest part of the tutorial. So if you made it this far, congrats. <laughs> um, in all seriousness, go ahead and select your base layer as well as just a regular round type of brush. And on your base layer, you're going to sketch or draw, I should say, in a solid color, the silhouette of the object or the shape that you're going to draw. In my case, I'm drawing a sphere because that's what it is in the program for day 20. But if you're on day 21, it's going to be an object. Or if you're drawing your own thing, it's going to be your own thing. You're then going to pick a grayish type of purple as well as a super, super soft brush, like the soft brush that comes with Procreate or any soft round brush. And on your shadows layer, that's very important, you're going to draw the very like main general shadow. So we're not really taking into account the reflections yet. We're really just kind of drawing the super general shadow. If you're drawing a sphere just like me, 
Um, it's probably going to be uh, this like crescent moon shape in the bottom and then you're probably going to have a little bit of shadow that come up to the top as well. And since we're drawing something that is super reflective, I also recommend that you erase a very thin line around the edges so that your base color kind of shines through this, this shadow. And that, that's kind of doing two things. It helps with making it feel shinier, <laughs> but it also helps your piece or your object kind of separate from the background a little bit. So it's adding some contrast, which, which is always good in general, especially when you're drawing super shiny metal. And we're trying something that almost looks like, like a mirror. That That's not really something you would find in real life in terms of metal. It would probably be an in-between this tutorial and the last tutorial, which was about old metal. And I will link this old metal tutorial in the description below, as well as putting it in the annotations, because I highly recommend you watch both tutorials and kind of combine them together, because that's way more of what you would see in real life in terms of metal. You would rarely see just like a super shiny metal just like this. It's just not really a thing. So incorporating some texture will definitely be helpful. But it's also a really good idea to just practice making your object super shiny at first because that is that is fairly difficult, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna show you how to do it and you're gonna definitely be able to do it. But it's good to practice just shiny before adding some texture to make it super realistic. So that being said, go ahead and select your reflection layer and you're going to select the same color that you have for your background. In this case, since we're just practicing the texture, I'm going to go with my same gray. Um, and you're just going to brush over kind of the middle section of your object. And you're basically imagining the reflection of the environment around it. In this case, it's just gray. But if you had a, like a, I don't know, like a field or, or a forest, you would have it kind of wrap around your object and that's where it can get a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to show you an example if with just like a general field type of scenery. You would have the grass that would curve upward and then you would add the sky that would just be a very simple blob on the top. But again, this is fairly easy because it's a, s a sphere so there is not a lot of funky forms and shapes happening but it can get fairly intricate so make sure that you do a lot of trial and error with this step because it is a very important one in making your piece feel realistic and just interesting in general so take your time here because this is really what's going to make or break your piece but also just have fun because we're just drawing so there's it's like it's no no big deal um i hope i didn't scare you there once you have a reflection that you like go ahead and select your light layer as well as a super light yellow or blue or any type of color that feels like your your environment is and i made a mistake here because since my environment is gray i should have gone with just like a, a gray like super light gray but i went with like a very bright yellow and all you're doing really at this step is you're drawing this sort of ring of light that starts at kind of in the middle slash bottom section of your object and wraps around up until the top. And you're also going to draw a very soft light on the same side as your your light source. So imagining in my case, my light source in the top left. So that's why I'm drawing it there. But if it was on the top right for you, you could draw it on the top right. And there it's not a step that you have to do. It's just I was fixing my um, my color mistake. Once you have this ring light situation going on, go ahead and select your highlight layer as well as a really super bright gray. And you can stick with the same super soft brush and you're going to draw like a very intense light. And the thing with shiny metal is your highlights are probably going to have fairly rough and defined edges as opposed to older metals or like less shiny uh, surfaces. That's one of the main differences. So if you want your surface to look super shiny, you're going to have really, really hard edges on your highlights. Otherwise, you're going to have softer edges. And depending on the situation and the environment, you might get other highlights on other parts of your, your object. And in this case, I'm going to just stick with this one main highlight, but feel free to experiment. Once that is done, go ahead and select your reflected light layer. And that's going to be a game changer for you at least it was for me so i hope it is for you as well and with your same color and your same brush i don't know why i opened the layer panel again here you're just <laughs> staying on your reflected light layer you're going to draw this 
small half moon, almost just like a slightly curved line on the bottom part of your object. And this is something that we, we can tend to not really think about, but shiny objects, um, you get the reflection from the surface they're on as well. So it wouldn't be fully, like it wouldn't be a full shadow on the bottom, you would actually kind of see the table or the ground that is below it. So that, that is what this reflected layer is all about. It's kind of showing that the environment is also reflected on your, your object. So you can see here, it looks really cool and makes the piece feel super shiny. And you will also use the same brush in the same color, staying on the same layer to add some reflected lights on the side. So again, it's just very small curved lines on the side. Um, these you're not going to leave any space. If you look at the one on the bottom, we actually left a little bit of a shadow between the bottom edge and the reflected light. We're not going to do that on the side, it's going to be straight on the edge of your object. And you, you don't want to overdo this, so definitely don't hesitate to use your eraser to just make your reflected lights as thin as, as needed as possible. Uh, so that it looks super contrasted, super shiny, and very refined. The next thing we're going to do, which is not super necessary in this case because our background is gray, is we're going to add some ambient light. And the way to do that is you just you would just pick the main color of the environment and you would brush it very softly on the sides of your object. So it is not reflected light, it is ambient light, and it just helps everything blend in a little bit better together. You can see here if I change my background to blue, it just makes it feel like the, the sphere is part of, of the scene instead of just like a separate element. In that same type of idea, we're also going to add a drop shadow. So select your drop shadow layer as well as your grayish purple that you used earlier and just kind of draw a shadow below the sphere or the object that you're drawing to help situate it in, in the space. Um, Again, in this case, this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because we're drawing just on like flat gray layer. <laughs> but if you are drawing a full on scene, that's a really nice way of making it feel like your object is actually like sitting on a surface instead of just floating in the air. So there you go. This was how to draw super shiny metal in pretty much any design software. If you are following the program, make sure you come back to this video tomorrow for day 21. So day 20, which was today, was all about just practicing the texture using a sphere. And day 21 is all about using the same technique. So this exact same video, same steps, but in context. So on an object or something like that. And make sure to also watch the old metal tutorial. So you get the full technique, which is going to allow you to draw super realistic metal. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up because it really does help the channel. And before you leave, don't forget to subscribe because I put out new videos like this one every week, especially during the month of January, where we're going to cover a total of 13 different textures spread across five teams. So make sure not to miss that and I will see you soon.